Have you heard of fluoroquinolone toxicity or more commonly floxing? A lot of people haven't. A lot of people aren't aware of the black box warning on medications like Levaquin and Cipro. They're used for sinusitis, they're used for urinary tract infections, sometimes used for some skin infections. They're recommended usually now as second or third tier medications due to side effects. But a lot of times people aren't aware of it, sometimes the doctors aren't aware of it, and you can get what they call floxing, which unfortunately can be anything from mild to severe very quickly. So I wanna make sure patients or people are aware of it. It's not everybody who gets it when they take these medications. You just wanna be aware of these side effects and you wanna be able to sure that you discuss them with the doctor who's prescribed them to that they're aware and they explain to you what the pluses and minuses are before you start the medication. There are about six different things that, that we normally will see patients who have been exposed to one of the antibiotics. We're gonna just go head to toe. They will have brain fog. They will feel very foggy. Their brain will not function the way that it used to. This could be from inflammation, immune reaction to the toxin that's, uh, that they're being caused from the exposure to the antibiotic. This could be because of the histamine, which is an allergic response. This could be caused by gut reaction to it and the gut-brain connection through the vagus nerve and other things. It could be all of the above because of the way that some that blocks GABA, which is one of the calming uh, neurotransmitters. Patients with floxing will, may have anxiety, and that's one of the ways we can deal with it. If patients who have been quote-unquote floxed will have, be sensitive to certain medications, some cases they may be sensitive to medications like the SSRIs, which is things like Prozac and Zoloft and medications like that. You want to make sure that your doctors are aware of what's going on and how to treat it and read the literature of what you may be sensitive to. There's plenty of people who do really well on the antidepressants. There's other people who have to have had even a, a worsening reaction. Work with somebody who at least has, has been able to read the literature. Third issue is we get a lot of patients who have neuropathy, which is burning damage to the nerve. It's, it could be a burning sensation anywhere throughout the body. Unfortunately, it may be the whole body. It could be just tingling in the fingers. A lot of people feel it in the feet for some reason. That is a pretty common side effect. It's one of the tougher side effects to treat. A lot of times we'll have to do a couple different things. We can start by combination of doing some detox with the patient through sauna and helping the liver and, and doing things to boost glutathione and some, and some other um, pathways. Detox, you want to balance the immune system as well as use some supplement specific for neuropathy, things like ALA, PEA, carnitine, and then kind of proceed from there. There are other more complicated procedures you can do. You can get injections in the nerve, you can get IVs in the nerve. The most advanced, but also most expensive procedure can be done. People are getting IVIG, where it's actually an antibody that's passed into an IV. There are people now doing what's called plasmapheresis, which is kind of like an oil chain for your body where they're trying to take out the, the every infection and immune reaction in the blood. And you can kind of start over. Some people do really well with that. It's not, it's not covered by insurance. It can be burdensomely expensive, but it is a way of dealing with it. That's another it's common issue that we see in patients who have been floxed. A lot of other patients will have muscle and joint pain. This is the combination of all the things that we discussed before. The immune reaction, the inflammation, the autoimmune response, the histamine, and also one of the more other more common things we'll wrap it with is it does can damage because of all things we just went through, tendons and ligaments. People have a much more increased chance of rupturing their tendons and ligaments because of the damage being done from the fluoroquinolone. So A, we want to calm down the inflammation. This could be done a lot of different ways. Peptides like thymus and beta-4, you try to avoid BPC-157 because of its increased uh, histamine, which may make you feel worse. You can do it through uh, low-dose naltrexone. Uh, you can do it through things like omega-3 fish oil. Some patients curcumin does well. You, we can use Tylenol. There's steroids we try to avoid if at all possible because steroids may exacerbate the acute condition. It's something that you can use usually longer if, at, at further states if you need to. So we really want to target the joint complaints. So like I said, we talked about the tendon complaints. Those are treated with a lot of the similar medications. We can do specific injections into the tendons or around the tendons. This could be done again, same answers, a lot of it, TB4. We could be done through stribulicin, a new peptide called SS31. We can try PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, which is cells derived from your blood. It could be done again through Tylenol. You could try things like red light therapy. All these different components can help deal with some of the symptoms. Another more common thing that we see in these types of patients 
is mitochondrial dysfunction, mitochondrial damage. Mitochondria is the energy part of your cell. It helps your body in terms of NAD levels. It helps in terms of calcium levels. It, it regulates energy production. It helps your body deal with oxidative stress and free radicals. If that is damaged, you're gonna get everything from brain fog, fatigue. You can increase in the joint pain that we talked about before. So you want to feed the mitochondria. And you want to do things as a package deal. You want to add ribose. You want to add NAD or NR, nicotinamide riboside. You want to be adding in alpha-lipoic acid, which is also going to help the nerve, which I mentioned before. You want to be adding in uh, carnitine. You can also add in what's called NERF-2, which helps as a detox mechanism. And you also want to add in something called urolysin A, which helps with mitophagy, which is the recycling of the mitochondria. Especially in this type of situation, it helps the body kind of reboot and clear out the bad ones. You may want to add a product called spermidine as well, which also helps to recycle the cells. And if you can combine this with the other things that we mentioned, you're on the, hopefully on the way to helping yourself get better. Overall things that I've kind of mentioned throughout the talk here, but I want to make sure I kind of put them in a nice little pretty package here. There's certain medications, that especially right after this happened and you're not really being treated yet, try to avoid if possible. Steroids, include steroid inhalers. You want to try to avoid reflux medications like Nexium they may exacerbate your conditions. Anything that has fluoride in it, so there's certain asthma inhalers you may need to avoid initially, like Flovent. If you have to use them, you use them, we can deal with the side effects. Some people say that you should be really careful ibuprofen and Advil. Some patients have really major issues with it, some patients are fine. Initially, diet-wise, always that question to regulate the immune system. We definitely avoid sugar because it's very inflammatory. You can avoid gluten if you find gluten makes you worse. Extreme diets, I don't agree with. Some other doctors profess them. I found patients will end up having some vitamin deficiencies. That actually makes them worse than the, the initial problem. So we don't, we, you don't want to go caloric restricted so much. You don't want to have vitamin deficiencies. I have a patient come back with like vitamin D deficiencies and vitamin C deficiencies because they're so afraid to eat anything or do anything that they end up losing too much weight and not having the right nutrients in their system. One of those nutrients that we tend to watch really attentively is iron. Iron can be really low in patients who have fluoroquinolone toxicity. Be aware of that, get the iron checked. You wanna get your vitamin B6 checked because that is one of the um, nutrients that's affected by being exposed to fluoroquinolone toxicity. Um, that level can be very high. You don't take any multi, uh, like a B complex that has B6. You wanna avoid green tea and matcha because they're usually high in B6. And that is a starting point. So again, we hit the big points here. Make sure you talk to your doctor about it if you need to go on any of these medications. And then we gotta target, target detox. We gotta target the immune system. We gotta target the, the nerves. We wanna target the joints. We wanna to make sure the tendons are okay. Deal with the brain fog. Deal with the, any excess histamine. So it's a very, could be a very complicated issue, but once people start getting on the right protocol, they can improve pretty quickly and move to resolution. This is not something that most people have to deal with the rest of their lives, but it's something to definitely be aware of and be their own advocate when they're discussing things with their healthcare provider. This is one of those ones where I really cannot answer any specific medical questions for individual cases. They're glad to see me or one of the providers throughout the country that can help them. But if you do like this content, feel, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more.